fire, though, killing three cats. Continuing coverage tonight with a cleanup underway near Orange Grove today following that training jet crash earlier in the week. The investigation now well underway. The Navy on the scene yesterday coming from Jacksonville, Florida to investigate this morning, bringing in heavy equipment to relocate the jet as they begin cleaning up the wreckage. No word still on what led up to that crash. Accused of stabbing a Corpus Christi police officer and injuring, injuring two others. Tonight, that man accused of those crimes facing some very serious charges. Take a look. 54-year-old Henry Gossa charged with three counts of attempted capital murder, resisting arrest, as well as attempted burglary. Police say Gossa tried to break into a neighbor's house just before 1 a.m., happening at a house here on McGloin. That's right near the Corpus Christi International Airport. A neighbor pointed out Garza as a suspect. Officers are tracking him down. Officers say he pulled a knife when they tried to arrest him. Now, even though those three officers were hurt, all are expected to be okay. Continuing coverage now on the border crisis. Today, Representative Joaquin Castro, along with six other Democrats, visiting a facility in Carrizo Springs. Castro saying their goal to provide oversight and help in trying to find a solution. Facilities holding unaccompanied minors now overwhelmed. Many of the kids forced to stay in Border Patrol processing centers longer than legally allowed. That even these facilities that have better conditions than the CBP processing centers are not the places for kids that kids should be moved quickly along to their family sponsors. And they are there visiting the, the border wall down there uh, as that crisis continues. The legal limit to hold a child in CBP custody is 72 hours. A Border Patrol officer says this morning the average time was about 90 hours. Happening last night, a group of Republican senators, including Ted Cruz, getting a first-hand look at the border near Harlingen. The senators escorted by Border Patrol DPS troopers. And this coming as Republicans accused the Biden administration of causing a surge of illegal border crossings, including the large numbers of unaccompanied children. The group also at today's tour in Carrizo Springs. Tonight, police in Houston are trying to figure out what led a man to climb up a crane. Take a look at that. Police called to the construction site around 3 a.m. A man had jumped a construction fence, climbed 15 to 20 stories on a crane, then just sat in the operator's cabin. Officers then using a drone to get a better look. Three hours later, SWAT officers managed to climb up and talk with him, later taking him into custody. There's no word tonight on why he climbed up that crane in the first place. Tonight, veterans in focus and an opportunity for people who've lost a spouse, a parent, or even a sibling while defending our country. Our Veterans Issue reporter Greg Chandler live in studio tonight. Greg, what, what kind of opportunity are, are we talking about here? Well, Paul, Gold Star families lost, as you said, a child, a spouse, a parent, even a sibling while serving the country. Those families now eligible for a new opportunity. 20 U.S. House of Representatives districts are participating in, including the Texas 27th. Congressman Michael Cloud has a one-year paid job in one of his local offices, either in Victoria or here in Corpus Christi. Qualifications are simple. Be a member of a Gold Star family and have a high school diploma. Salaries range from $41,000 to $54,000. And while the job will be suited to the person's skills, Cloud says it definitely involves working with people. Working and serving in the district, but also getting to see, uh, not only see and observe uh, in the legislative process, but get some first, first-hand experience and input. Now, if you're a Gold Star family member and want more information, we'll have a link for you up on our website, ChrisTV.com. For Veterans in Focus, Greg Chandler, Chris 6 News. And don't forget, if you are a veteran, we have an information page just for you. You'll find it at ChrisTV.com slash Veterans in Focus. We also have a hotline number for veterans in need of help. The number you see right there, 361-654-1620. All right, time for a first look at your forecast now. Chief Meteorologist Dale Nelson here in the studio. And Dale, <laughs> Dale, I'm, you know what? I'm, I've been looking at that tie today and trying to think what is on that tie. I'm looking now and it just looks like a bunch of colors. It's actually uh, fish. Oh, and, Friday uh, fish. This is my uh, Texas State Aquarium tie. Ah, okay. And, there you uh, have so it. <laughs> I've got one uh, theme for a lot of different things. This one's from the Texas State Aquarium. So there you have it. And I hope you're having a great Friday. Uh, look at this. It's sunny in Beeville, sunny in Cal Allen. But uh, here come the clouds downtown Marina area and also over at Rockport. So uh, the clouds are picking up. We do have 
a coastal flood advisory till 2 a.m. tonight. It's higher than normal tides on area beaches. If you live on the island, you know what that means. And there's will be some fog down around Baffin Bay and out into the Gulf waters. But that's the extent of what's going on there. Visible satellite shows those clouds starting to stream in a little bit. Otherwise, we've had a lot of sunshine and inland. Uh, it's really warm. It's 91 in Catula, 87 in Freer right now. We're just at 78 here and 72 in Port Aransas. So about a 20 degree spread across the viewing area and the day planner for tomorrow. More clouds and more wind. Morning low 68. Afternoon high tomorrow, 84, but a lot of clouds until a little late day sun and uh, winds will be gusty ahead of a cold front. Will that bring rain to the area in a few minutes? I'll have your complete forecast for you right here, Paul. All right, Dale, thank you so much. Well, some folks in Fafurias complaining about buzzards around town. The Public Works Department is saying it's taking action today to get the large birds to take flight somewhere else. City officials say they'll be out on the west side of town in the areas of Stockton, Allen, Blucher, Bennett and Adams Street from 7 to 8 tonight using firecrackers, which could sound like gunfire. They want to make sure everyone there, they're not alarmed by those sounds. And continuing their theater journey, one local high school taking center stage all after competition after competition. We're talking about Veterans Memorial High School, the only school in the Corpus Christi area making it to the regional one act play competition. Our Javier Guerra spoke with the cast and their teacher on the challenges of competing all during a pandemic. We have had to get accustomed to a new normal during this pandemic. For students participating in one act play, it sure has been a challenge. It's very difficult to bring live, living, breathing, performing arts and perform for an empty house. The Veterans Memorial High School one act play team has made history. In the six years that the school has been open, this is the first time they have advanced to regionals and they are the only Corpus Christi school in their district to do so this year. Our students need this, I know for my students, and they can probably speak to this, but for myself as well, that being able to perform and create arts and compete this year has meant more than any year previously. It brings us a sense of normalcy. For Laurel Brashears, performing is helping her kids feel some type of normal. This pandemic has really challenged the cast and crew. A lot of times seeing someone's face is important for acting, but this year masks were required for competitions for the safety of the students. You definitely yes. have to learn how to use like the upper part of your face and your whole body <laughs> yes. to get yeah. what you want to come across to the exactly. audience. Students even had to rehearse on Zoom and lost a lot of rehearsal time in person. With the loss of rehearsal time and everything, it's been a challenge, but we've been able to overcome it and still come together and create something. So it's been really, really, I'm really proud. At their past competitions, the students have received several awards for their performance. The regional competition will take place on April the 17th in San Antonio. The cast will perform and will receive awards virtually. In Corpus Christi, Javier Guerra, Chris 6 News. Our kudos to them.